Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be discussing the character of Selen and her questline and ultimately the ending, so big spoilers for that. After fighting a way through poisonous flowers, tight passages with frenzied pumpkin-headed warriors, you open a door to discover a sorcerer's study. The walls laden with scrolls, vials and crystals. In the centre of the room stands a figure, adorned in academic garb, and atop a stone headpiece, sculpted into the face of a woman. Her expression is serene, and she stands contemplative. This character introduces themselves as Selen, a sorceress. She possesses a certain edge to her personality, yet she is still charismatic. As you introduce yourself to her, you can ask her to teach you more about sorcery. She advises you to choose one's master wisely. I was exiled from the Academy of Rhea Lucaria as a reviled, apostate witch. Do you still wish to learn from me? Pursuing this will lead her to agree to teaching you, but not before she first warns you to anticipate grievances, something that we'll come back to later. She will reveal more information about what the glinstone magic really is. Glinstone is the amber of the cosmos. Golden Amber contains the remnants of ancient life and houses its vitality, while Glinstone contains residual life and thus the vitality of the stars. It should not be forgotten that Glinstone's sorcery is the study of the stars and the life therein. As Selen notes, the basis of this Glinstone art is something to be respected. The stars are going to be a big theme here. Her first task for you is to find a sorcerer a once Grand Master of the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, now exiled, Grand Master Azure, whose whole body appears to be made entirely of glinstones. He does not speak, we cannot attack him or interact with him any further, he simply hands us his namesake spell, Comet Azure. This is one of the greatest DPS spells in this game, it fires a tremendous comet in a torrent akin to the distant starry expanse the place said to be the origin of the glintstone. When Azure glimpsed into the primeval current, he saw darkness. He was left both bewitched and fearful of the abyss. He saw a glimpse of the origin of the glintstone sorcery, which left him both terrified and captivated. This was the start of his descent into obsession, and ultimately his banishment from the academy. When returning to Selen, the next step of the quest is to find another former Academy member, Master Lusat. Selen tells us that, like Master Azure, he was banished from the Academy as well. Upon finding him, he also gives you a spell, the Stars of Ruin Sorcery. When Lusat glimpsed into the primeval current, he beheld the final moments of a great star cluster, and upon seeing it, he too was broken. These scholars of the stars discovered something beyond their comprehension that changed them forever. Based on their appearance, they dedicated themselves to the pursuit of knowledge at all costs, which presumably caused the Academy to expel them. We also know from first meeting Selen that she was expelled as well, and she partly reveals why. If you recall, I was exiled from the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. It was for attempting to restore the primeval current of Glinstone sorcery. The toothless pedantry peddled by the Carian royal family can rot for all I care. I want glimstone sorceries that open our minds, unbound by terrestrial taboos, no matter what we give in return. So Selen wishes for us to gather all of this knowledge from herself and these former Academy members in order to harness the raw glintstone power that has been forbidden by the Academy. So just some more information about Rhea Lucari Academy that I found. When I entered and I was looking around the environment, I kept seeing these stone-faced crowns and I wondered if they were meant to resemble a particular figure. And turns out they are. There are these portraits of these same figures dotted around the academy, and at glance the most recognisable figure here is Renala. But who are these bearded members? First we have Carolos. The Carolos Conspectus is the oldest of the academy's lineage of study, begat by the sorcerer Azure. Scholars who follow in his footsteps pursue the mysteries of comets. So we know that no one has achieved a higher rank than the former Grand Master Azure. 
but we know this was started by him as he gives you this comet spell. In addition to this, you can also give Selen a scroll which lets you learn the spell Shard Spiral, also from the Carolus Conspectus. This was the product of a failed attempt to create a new comet. This may be in reference to the Azure Comet and its creator's downfall. They tried to make another one that wouldn't cause the same thing to happen. Secondly, we have Olivenus. The lineage of the Olivenus Conspectus began with the sorcerer Lassat, and its adherents continue his study of meteors. So in a similar fashion, we also have the result of Grandmaster Lassat. Third, we have the Twin Sage. Scholars of the Twin Sage Conspectus were the elites of the academy, permitted to study and excel in sorceries of all kinds. I think this is a comment on how two heads are better than one necessarily. More brain power, more knowledge to be able to harness all sorts of sorceries. And here we have Lazuli. Scholars of the Lazuli Conspectus study carrion sorceries, a heterodox pursuit that views the moon as equal to the stars. This is quite an interesting school. As we know, stars are the absolute pillar of importance at the academy. Considering the moon to be of same importance to the stars is actually considered heresy. Then we finally have this portrait, who actually portrays a younger Selen. We can actually see what she looks like underneath her headpiece. You can see her character model. Selen is actually being imprisoned by the Academy. That's the reason she asked us to go and meet these former Grand Masters. She can't do it herself. The form you see before you is merely a projection. My body lies elsewhere. But the Academy shackles prevent it being moved. She asks us to go find her real body that is being imprisoned in the Witchbane ruins. Now, when you approach this area, you are greeted by this floating mass of stone faces, mouths agape by twisted amalgamation. This is a graven mass. We learn about them from this talisman. It depicts the first school of graven mages, a nightmare that would continue to haunt the academy. The primeval current is a forbidden tradition of glintstone sorcery. To those who cleave to its teachings, the act of collecting sorcerers to fashion them into the seed of stars is but another path of scientific inquiry. So those who went against the Academy's rules of studying the primeval current, something that Selen wants to do, were combined together into this haunting mass of bodies and heads to send a warning to others. Now, one of my favorite things to uncover is that everything has a meaning in this game, especially the names of characters and places. Specifically, where we find Selen chained to a wall in the Witchbane ruins. Bane means a source of harm or ruin, death, destruction, woe, poison, killer, slayer, all of these in reference to witches like Selen. The word Selen is also a German verb meaning to betray. Selen is thankful to see you here at the ruins. Thank you for coming. These shackles take a toll on us all. There is something I need you to look after. My primal glinstone. She entrusts us with her primal glinstone. Seemingly half alive blood vessels are visible within. In essence, a primal glintstone is a sorcerer's soul. If transplanted into a compatible new body after their original body dies, the sorcerer will rise again. We now have Selen's life in our hands. We can now free her from her bindings by placing this glintstone into another body. Specifically a puppet, Preceptor Suvis is hiding a dirty secret in a cellar among the ruins not far from the Sisters Three. The vile graven witch seems to be a frequent visitor to that place. So presumably they come to some sort of arrangement where this body would be kept in secret in case anything ever happened to Selen. She owes me for the help I gave her when she was expelled from the academy. Now, when we put the glintstone into her new body, Selen is free and ready for the next step of her plan. This is where the player needs to make a choice, to side with Selen or side with a fellow by the name of Jeren. You will have met him before the Radan boss fight. He's there celebrating the honorable festival. Now, his involvement with Selen is actually significant. His title is Witch Hunter. And if you actually go to the Witchbane ruins after defeating Radan and freeing Selen, he will be there. And listen what he has to say. You didn't know Selen, did you? She was known as the Graven Witch. Obsessed by the primeval current, countless sorcerers fell to her hand. The most dangerous mage in the entire history of Rhea Lacaria's academy. He's not the only one who thinks this. If you speak to Thorps, he will tell you 
Selen was well known. The most promising sorceress in the history of the Academy. I followed her at school. But there may as well have been an ocean between us. But Selen was expelled from the Academy, accused of unthinkable treatment of certain sorcerers, under the name of the Graven Witch. I still don't believe the accusations. The illustrious Selen would never do such things. How does this make you feel, knowing that you are helping to assist a murderer? Should you choose to side with Selen and fight Jaren, she will say to him, join the school to reflect on your mistake. Join the school may refer to the Graven School, adding another body to the pile, or rather another face to the orb. This hints that Selen's experiments may have contributed to the inception of the Graven School, as she is this so-called Graven Witch. Even if she didn't invent this punishment, you should reconsider Selen's character as someone who endorses the use of this torture, something the Academy wished to forget. Once you have defeated Jaren, Selen is overjoyed. With the bodies of Masters Azure and Lusat returned, the Academy can hone the primeval current, so that we, fallen children of the stars, shall beam with brilliance once again. She even humbly requests that when you become Elden Lord, please illuminate me. Lay bare the secrets of life which course the Elden Ring. Next time, I will be your student. If you reload this area, you will find the result of everything Selen has worked towards. This is what becomes of Selen. She, Azur, and Lasat combine, along with these other sorcerers, into this graven school mass. And if you return to where Azur and Lasat were, they will no longer be there, but the armor sets will. Reading the item description reveals much. They both had reached a near inorganic state, their crowns replacing their brain and skull altogether, and now removed from his body, is all but dead. This proves that these academics sacrificed their own bodies just so that they could increase their understanding of the primeval currents. This might explain why Selen chooses to become this mess. She sacrifices her physical body along with her associates in order to combine all of their knowledge into this hive mind. Selen's final line before she transforms is, If you fail to claim your throne, you can always pay me a visit. Oh, don't fret. Even my dullest pupils will always have a place here. This now has a more sinister meaning to it, as this orb has multiple faces. So as we previously knew, she has taken countless sorcerers in order to do this. There's been some discussion if this is indeed Selen's own doing, or if it was Renala who did this. Support for the Renala theory is that you need to first defeat Renala as a prerequisite for Selen to transform. After defeating Jaren, Selen also says, the Queen of Caria is no more, hinting that she is now going to challenge Renala. Renala also has the ability to rebirth things, as I mentioned in my Renala video, often imperfectly, so she might be responsible for rebirthing Selen into this. However, there is no other dialogue or notes that connect Selen and Renala. After Selen has transformed and you speak to Renala, she doesn't offer any comment on this. In addition, Renala was also shunned by the Academy, so I don't think she would have any reason to do this as Selen. Selen has a tragic fate, and you don't have the option to dissuade her from her goal. You could instead side with Jaren and defeat her, which might be a more merciful end. However, I would argue that becoming imprisoned into a graven mass is a more appropriate ending for her. She was both the culprit and the victim of the pursuit for forbidden knowledge. Selen is not a morally good character. Despite her refreshing personality and resourcefulness, she has no regard for ethics. Her character represents wanting what you can't have and suffering the consequences. One of the reasons why I loved From Software story structure is that you don't always need to have a happy ending to have a good story. These worlds are undesirable to live in and punishing should you wish to survive in them. NPCs will die, side characters will suffer, the main character will push through to the end, but often end up alone. I've seen some people comment on the questline, specifically that its ending is abrupt and doesn't really offer a resolution. 
I like to think that the unexpected element actually adds to the story. You have shock value, body horror, a likeable character now twisted into the unthinkable. To give her her conventional happy ending is not in keeping with the tone of From Software games. Pure of heart characters all die, selfish and evil characters suffer and then die as well. In this case, completing Selen's questline leaves behind an important lesson, a moral to her story. Do not meddle in the affairs of wizards, for they are subtle and quick to anger. I hope this was a good explanation as to Selen's character and in defense of why I think her questline is actually a really good story. This was a really interesting one to explore. Um, I loved every second of it. So thank you so much for listening, hearing me out. Please share your thoughts and any findings that you've had with Selen. I would love to read them. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Bye for now, everyone.